Because there's so much progress, and uh, uh, progress goes by exponentially. I got that. Therefore, yeah, I got that. the technology that humans create will eventually exponentially grow to the point that we are completely integrated with them, yeah. which is a BS. I don't a make the we won't be integrated. We'd be dependent. Yeah. Is well, no, no, no. I mean, that's the problem. No, but he's I have. saying integration. He's saying merging. But that's the problem. That's I have. Okay, wait. That's just the problem yeah. I have with but, these systems, though. Okay, other than the, I just think it's really dumb to like put the internet in our brains or whatever. Yeah, it is. Also, what happens if we <laughs> become entirely dependent on these systems and then they fail? Yeah, exactly. Because I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I that mean, that yeah. will, I don't like it and no. that's why I'm upset. Exactly. But, but that's why he's wrong about the whole idea. That there's a, there's a one system and that's the way it's going to be and everyone's going to fall. Exactly. That's yeah. why we're upset. Yeah. Like, upset. I don't you just want, said something yeah. that might not be right. But like, I don't, want, right. I don't want technology to be integrated. Okay, but we won't be finished yet with reverse engineering the human brain and understanding its methods. There will be new dangers from these new technologies. And then I'm optimistic you'll show me the dangers from these new technologies. And by that, our old way of which is already superior. And I'm optimistic of harnessing all the human knowledge and the new construction. We were talking earlier about how proud we are to be part of the Bard community, even though we're not on campus. We are extremely lucky and proud to be part of this, just thinking about what it means to be alive and what it means to be human and why we're here and who we are at age 17, um, to be to have the opportunity even, not just to be physically thinking about it, but to be given the opportunity to think about it is astonishing because we could have the capacity to think about these things but not be given an outlet. And Bard gives us an outlet to think about things far more mature than people give us credit for being able to think about. robot feels pleased. You don't know why. How do you why? know that a human feels pleased other than the fact that they say, I feel pleased. That's no, no, true. The thing is that, oh, no. What you define being pleased as the, no, no. will be different than how I define and how I feel it. So, well, no, no, no. We might feel it the same way for all we know, but we will be pleased by different things. Yes. But it's not the same thing. Well, I mean in the sense that Nobody has to listen to this, but you know, for those who want. Here we go. They're running away. 
<laughs> you were made men to follow after knowledge and excellence. And then he adds, and it was as if I was hearing it for the first time, like the blast of a trumpet, like the voice of God. And it is that moment, it is exactly at that moment that Primo Levi knows he will survive Auschwitz because he discovered what it means to be human and he discovered that he had a soul. Now, when we ask the question, how should we imagine human beings in the inhuman age, we must keep in mind that the inhuman age is not only a future, but already has a past. The following should never be forgotten. It was Primo Levi who survived Auschwitz, who at the end of his life wrote this single line. It happened and therefore it can happen again. That's all we want to say. It happened and therefore it happened again. And when we face new phenomena in which on a mass scale people are deprived of their dignity, then we intellectuals are complicit and guilty as hell. That's what I want to say.